In Galatians 6, we read about this uh, reaping what you sow, talking about reaping what you sow. And uh, I think fairly briefly, but the point needs to be made, and, and I'd like to make that such that it sticks with you. In uh, Galatians 6, verse 7, do not be deceived, God is not mocked. Whatever one sows, that will he also reap. And it is, uh, you know, a well-known verse. It gets quoted quite often, and, and it, that's that's good. That's fine. It is a nice, clear uh, summation of several teachings. But I think that it is too often taken as a threat instead of a promise. When in the context, it's not a threat. In the context, it's a promise. And uh, I'd like us to take the encouragement from it that it's intended to be. He said, the one who sows to his own flesh will from the flesh reap corruption, but the one who sows to the Spirit will from the Spirit reap eternal life. Let us not grow weary of doing good, for in due season we will reap if we don't give up. So yes, if we are mindful of the flesh, then yes, we're going to get what the flesh has in the end, corruption, that means decay. It goes to the grave. But if we are mindful of the Spirit and the things of the Spirit, spiritual matters, then we have this instead, which is a promise. We reap from the Spirit eternal life. We're doing good now, but he said, let us not grow weary in doing it. In due season we will reap if we do not give up. What, what Paul is acknowledging is that we may not see the outcome of our right choices and our good living and our spiritual emphasis at the moment, that for a time there's suffering and there's difficulty and there's setbacks. And we're doing good. And maybe we'll get tired of doing it. But he said, don't. Don't grow weary of doing good. In due season, we will reap if we do not give up. Hold on. Is the meaning. It, there's coming a time, a due season. We know for sure this comes to an end. We know it comes to an end. We know it comes to a point and that, as he said, God is not mocked. Don't be deceived. God is not mocked. Whatever a person sows is what he will reap. And this is not meant necessarily to be a threat that, oh, you can't get away with it. Although it's true that you can't get away with it. <laughs> and it's true that we're not going to live wrong and die right. Okay, that's, that's true and that's fine. But it's not really why Paul said that at that point in time in the letter. What he's saying to them is, hold on to the faith. Keep going in the faith. The effort seems like a lot, but it will have its reward. God is going to repay you. Uh, in this vein, I wanted to go back to Ecclesiastes and, and look at this. It, it's really something that should be quotable from memory, but the 12th chapter, 13th and 14th verses is the conclusion, the end of the matter, all has been heard. Well, here's the thing about that. What is the matter and what has been heard? <laughs> what are we talking about? Well, the letter, you know, this thing in Ecclesiastes, it's worth thinking about it in the light of Galatians 6. What is the end of the matter? Well, it's this, fear God, keep his commandments. This is the whole duty of man, for God will bring every deed into judgment with every secret thing, whether it's good or whether it's evil. So the conclusion he draws is, what do we do? We fear God, we keep his commandments. This is everything. God will bring everything into judgment, secret things into judgment, and we will. it will be known whether they are good or whether they are evil. Everything is going to come out in the wash. 
That's the idea. Why is this the conclusion? The conclusion of what? The end of what matter? What has been heard? It's in the answer to that question that this resembles Galatians 6. What has been heard is how this letter started out. That Solomon, king over Israel, was given everything. He had riches, honor, glory, the pleasures of life, whatever material goods anybody would ever want or relationships or whatever else it might be. He had everything. And he set his heart in the wisdom of the Holy Spirit to test everything in life and see what's, what is just and what is guaranteed. That's the whole point of Ecclesiastes. What is just and what is guaranteed? That's why he goes through everything that he goes through. And he talks about, well, there's a time for everything. Sometimes it's time for war and sometimes it's time for peace. And they both have a time, a right time for this is what happens when. There's a time for everything. He finds that, you know, sometimes those who work do not get paid or are not paid appropriately or are not credited with the work that they have done. Sometimes those who are wise do not have money or those who are wise are not thanked for their wisdom. Or sometimes somebody works and they get money and then the money disappears. It gets stolen. It gets lost in a business venture. Or they die. And all the money they worked for and saved, it gets passed on to the next and who knows what the next one is going to do with it? Not what the person who earned it intended to do with it, that's for sure. And he's examining all these things, saying, are they just? Are they guaranteed? The answer is no, they're not. Sometimes we work and we are paid commensurate. Sometimes our, our compensation is fair and is right, and we feel like, okay, we're happy about this. But sometimes it's not. Sometimes we get cheated by employers. Sometimes we are undervalued in a society. Sometimes things happen to the money. Market forces, governments, wars, thieves. Anything can happen. Maybe you worked hard and you deserve to have what you need and you deserve to be treated nicely. You've done only nice and good things for people at work. You've been there for them. But when your time comes, they don't treat you that way. Solomon recognized, yeah, sometimes that's how it actually goes. We want to believe that our efforts have a just and guaranteed outcome, that if you live right, Things are going to go well for you, but that is not guaranteed. As a rule, living right is a good thing and has benefits. That's true, but it's certainly not guaranteed. There are injustices in the way that we are being treated because we love the Lord. We are being, there are injustices in how we're being treated because we love the truth. And you may work hard and not be compensated, or you may do good that is not recognized. You may have wisdom that nobody listens to. There's all kinds of unjust things in the world and in societies, and you know it's the human condition. There's all kinds of things that are unjust. None of those things are guaranteed. You can work very hard and see none of it. You may die. Not to be uh, morbid or... or uh, down just to speak real it's just genuine and real anything can happen we don't know what comes next we don't know what's going to happen but that doesn't have to be scary because we have the answer in ecclesiastes 12 the end of the matter is this right you, you might live a godly life you might be a slave you might be poor 
You might be undervalued, mistreated, hated by people. But if you are living right, Ecclesiastes 12, fear God and keep his commandments. This is the whole duty of man. What's it mean? It means if you're rich or if you're poor, if you're a slave or, or if you're free, if you're male or you're female, if you're young or you're old, if you're able-bodied or you're sick or decrepit, none of it matters. If you feared God and keep his commandments, you have done everything that God requires. And the implication to that is you will be blessed. That's what it means. Maybe not stated that way here, but when you have this, you know, in the forefront of the mind, and you go back and consider what Paul said in Galatians 6 7, do not be deceived. It started with verse 6 let the one who's taught the word share all good things with the one who teaches. Don't be deceived. God is not mocked. Whatever one sows, that will he also reap. Whoever sows to the flesh will reap from it decay, but the one who sows to the Spirit will from the Spirit reap eternal life. Let's not grow weary of doing good. We will reap in due season. The implication is just that. There are things that weary us. Outcomes here are not just. Just outcomes are not guaranteed. Things may not go our way in every case or in many cases, but it doesn't matter. Jew or Greek, slave or free, male or female, young or old, rich or poor, it doesn't matter. What matters is, are you living right? Because there's nothing else to this. Don't be deceived. There is nothing else to this. It is just that simple. That's the thing that really, really, genuinely matters. Fear God and keep his commandments. That is the whole duty of humankind. If you are doing that, then don't be deceived. God is not mocked. What you sow is what you will reap. If you are living right, if you fear God, if you are keeping his commandments, you will be saved. You will be in heaven with him. He is your father and heaven is your home. You are a Christian. You are a child of God. Don't be deceived. There's not more to it than this. God is not mocked. It's not going to be the case, you know, even if we're mocked. <laughs> right? I'm mocked. I'm mistreated. I'm shortchanged. I'm not getting what's coming to me. But not so with God. He won't be mocked. In the judgment, it's all going to come out even. You'll be exonerated. You'll be lifted up. God has your back. That's the meaning of Galatians 6. He's trying to tell them, you should stand up to the error that is among you with the Judaizers. Those of you who are holding to the faith, you stand up. You stay firm. God has got your back. You'll be repaid in the end, though it's tough right now. That's what he's telling them. And that's true for us. Some things are tough, no doubt. I don't say this to minimize suffering. I'm saying take it in the scriptural way that it's intended. Yeah, the scriptures contemplate that that's the way things are. Life is not fair. What is crooked cannot be straightened. Those are hard things to accept. When you're young, you think you're going to straighten everything out. And then you get older, <laughs> and you realize there's some things that cannot be straightened. There's some things I can't do anything about except pray. And uh, that's how it's going to be, but I know that God sees it too. And God is not mocked, and God is not unjust. And he'll get us. He'll cover you. He's good for it, and the reward, well, the reward outweighs what we pay for it by 
so many times over, it's infinite, it's undefined. Eternal life is not worthy to be compared with the sufferings of this world. So remember these things. It's worth it, the Christian life, the choices that you make, and God sees it even if nobody else does. He's got you. Trust in him. Embrace your salvation. And join John in saying, come Lord Jesus. Today, if you're not a Christian, become a Christian. Repent of sins. Put God first in your life. This is the whole duty. Yesterday can be gone, and today is a new day, and you can start anew in the Lord. If today you wish to become his child, you repent of sin, you confess Jesus as the Christ, the Son of God, you be buried together with him in baptism for forgiveness of your sins. We have water prepared for the purpose. And you'll be raised from the water of baptism, a new creature created in him for good works. And these are the things that we persist in. And sometimes it has a good reward. Sometimes people do see, hey, that one is honest. That one is trustworthy. That one was there for me. And sometimes people do repay you with kindness, and it's good. Man, I think if we never saw any good, we might not make it. <laughs> But you got to expect that, you know, sometimes it's not going to be like that. But God has got your back. If today you are a Christian but haven't lived right, repent. Pray God for forgiveness and let us help you too because we all are suffering in life. Things that you've uh, uh, gone through, things that you, you're, you've been beset with are not unique. Others have been there, might have some word of encouragement to help. If you need our prayers, we're glad to pray with you. If you today need the prayers of the saints, or if you today need to obey the gospel, take advantage of God's grace and let your need be known by coming to the front now while together we stand and sing the song that's been selected.